Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we're taking another look at the Airbus and the Boeing and we're going to compare them together. I am a real world airline pilot, I've flown the Airbus for uh, several years with many thousands of hours operating it and I now fly the Boeing 787 in the real world. So in this video we're going to compare the auto flight systems of the Airbus and the Boeing and see how they're different and how we uh, interact with them differently. What we're mainly going to be talking about is the Airbus FCU versus the Boeing MCP. So that's the Airbus Flight Control Unit versus the Boeing Mode Control Panel. This is the panel through which we interact with the autopilot, one of the most used parts of the aircraft, an absolutely critical part of design on these complex airliners. They need to be uh, incredibly clear and relatively simple to use so that pilots can get the right modes out of the automatic systems in the aeroplane when they need them, uh, even in relatively dynamic situations. Mini Cockpit have sponsored this video with their Mini FCU uh, and they, as they wanted me to uh, get the word out about their new pre-order campaign. So thank you to them for sponsoring this video um, and uh, in this video I'll be using that Mini FCU to guide both the Airbus through the air and we'll also see how thanks to the new MobiFlight uh, uh, partnership from Mini Cockpit you can actually use the Mini FCU to operate other aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator including now the Boeing 787. So it's like having a little a mode control panel for the Boeing as well and we'll see what the differences are between them and how uh, how we get around them and you'll also see how similar in many ways Boeing and Airbus actually are. Pre-orders are now open for the next wave of mini cockpit uh, mini FCUs if you'd like to order one please do follow the link in the description uh, by using my link you can get 10% off your pre-order of the mini cockpit FCU uh, and you'll see throughout this video that I'll be using it in today's video for operating both the Airbus and the Boeing. So in this video we'll start off with a recap of the Airbus flight control unit and how we use it to operate the Airbus and then we'll quickly move on to seeing how we can use the Boeing Mo control panel to fly the Boeing 787 and what the differences are and um, which sort of methods I prefer in the Boeing compared to the Airbus. Let's jump into the flight deck. So let's have a quick introduction of the uh, Airbus FCU flight control unit up here and as we have our mini FCU on here. Now this is a ergonomic genius piece of design as far as I'm concerned. I absolutely love it. I think it's so simple. It has so many functions through such a few amounts of controls. You just have these four uh, rotary knobs here and then you have just a couple of buttons around them. It's, it's really super. Um, and we're going to see how those modes work today. But just a quick refresher on the FCU. You have speed window, which is over here. Then you have, which is your... Um, obviously you're going to control your speed, <laughs> don't know how else to put that. Uh, then you've got your heading which is your lateral modes, so that's going to control your navigation, uh, turning left and right essentially. In the middle you have your main autopilot master switches and auto throttle master switches as well as the option to switch between track FBA and uh, heading vertical speed. Then you have your altitude window to control your vertical modes and then you have another vertical mode which is your vertical speed over here. So it's that simple. When it's in this sort of configuration, which is a typical pre-flight configuration once the aircraft is set up, we've got dashes and dots. This is saying, I'm not going to show you any information because I'm not in control of the speed, uh, I'm not in control of the heading, and I'm not in control of the vertical speed. The aeroplane is controlling all of those. All I've got control of is the altitude window. The aeroplane will not go above this altitude window uh, uh, without me changing it, so it stays visible. If I was to pull one of these, let's say we pull the heading, it will appear and then you can see heading 258 there. That is now the heading the airplane will fly and if we look down on the PFD uh, you'll see that we have a blank uh, navigational mode. If I push it in it goes back to nav and this is the great thing about having this uh, mini FCU is that the push and pull works and I've got the uh, way to switch between the two easily. It's important to note that this is uh, what I think is so clever about the design uh, because you're pulling the controls towards you when you want to take control. So I want to control the heading, I pull the heading bug towards me and I have control. When I'm sick of that and I want the aeroplane to uh, take control and fly the nav line, this line we've put in, because I've loaded in a departure here, the Bogner 1 X-ray from Gatwick, we've flown it many times on the channel, uh, I simply push it away from me and it goes into our dashes to say, okay, aeroplane's got control and our line goes solid and it will now fly that line and you can see nav has now armed. This is true of all these controls, so the altitude, the vertical speed, the heading and the uh, speed window all work like this. So that's a very basic rundown of the uh, the flight control unit. And of course the Mini FCU here is a direct uh, or a, an almost direct replication of it and the controls. So uh, you can see it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory in the sim what's going on. Now we've just taken off 
and what I want to do is show you the uh, some of the other controls so I can just engage the autopilot which is this button here press that and that's what we do on the real airplane autopilot one and you see the autopilot one light on there you tend to use the autopilot that you're of the side you're sitting on so autopilot one for the left autopilot two for the right Manflex 6D, you can see all thrust is armed, and now you can see nav mode is engaged, which makes sense, and it goes into climb. Bring our thrust levers back to climb. We're in thrust climb, climb, auto thrust. And now, remember what I said about the 5,000 feet? The airplane will not exceed that. And as you can see over here, uh, the 5,000 feet is a restriction here, KKS 17. However, at KKS 20, we need to be at 6,000 feet. But because I'm in managed climb mode, it won't exceed it even if I set 6,000 feet in the window. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'll just bring the flaps up as we go through the S-speed. And we will be comparing this to the Boeing, um, obviously, uh, in just a moment. I'm just giving you a, a brief explanation of how the Airbus does it, and then we'll see how the Boeing does it. Now, air traffic will continue to be annoyed at us, but that's fine. So shortly, it will level off at 5,000 feet. Now, if I was to put 6,000 in the window, you can see that it actually changes to 5,000 in magenta and go speed out constraint because it's still going to obey that 5000. Why is it obeying the 5000? Well the same reason it's giving us 220 knots because remember we've got these dashes in uh, the speed and I've given it, although I've written 6000 in the window, I've given it nav, uh, sorry, uh, climb mode. Now it shouldn't actually have climb armed anymore. Uh, no it would have climb armed so you can see that we're in out constraint now um, but we were in climb mode as opposed to open climb. So we are letting the airplane decide these things. This window is a limit, it doesn't mean we have control of it. Now, if we go back to our philosophy of pulling the control will actually let us override things and take control from it, I can pull on this control and it will go into open climb and it will now climb to whatever's in the window. So if I put six in, pull, we get open climb and the airplane will now go up, even though there's that restriction there of two uh, of uh, 5,000 feet, we're gonna exceed it. This is also possible on the Boeing, done in a slightly different way, but a similar principle. Same is true for the speed. You can see we haven't got a speed selected here, but it's flying at 220 knots, not 250. It's at 220 because there's a speed limit at this waypoint here of 220 loaded into the departure. In a moment that will increase, but again, I can improve it or increase it by pulling it and then winding it up to 250 and I take control that way. So I can pull this speed control to take control of the speed. And now, we're climbing up. It is a gentle climb in open climb because it's only a thousand feet uh, and up to up to uh, six thousand. If we wanted to go further on the climb, I can pull up to one five zero. Not sure up to my speed window there. We'll just close that and pull that. There we go, two fifty. Um, and you can see now it will go to full climb thrust because we're effectively in what in the Boeing would be flight level change, but here it's called open climb, and it's now climbing up. Uh, as fast as it can to 15,000 feet, i.e. it's using maximum thrust uh, and it will then use the pitch to climb for that speed. So you get the mode thrust climb over here, uh, which is telling us that the thrust is just commanding maximum climb thrust. If I increase the speed window now, the airplane will lower the nose, keeping the same thrust and try to climb at that new speed. So it's going to target that speed. If I close this window like that and give it to the airplane so we get the dashes, and I haven't been showing you up here because <laughs> this is, of course, just a replication of what's uh, on the actual FCU. Um, it will go to its managed speed, so what the airplane has calculated, what the departure had loaded, or what the airplane thinks. So below 10,000 feet, that's obviously going to be 250 knots. And also there's a 250 knot restriction on this departure we can see over here. So it's going to maintain that 250 knots for a bit longer, actually, uh, there under bog now. We are going to flight level, so I just set standards. There we go, up to flight level 150. So there we go, we've looked at climb mode, where it will obey the restrictions. We've looked at open climb, where I pull the control and it then climbs uh, to whatever I've set in the window, regardless of the restrictions. Uh, we've looked at how we can change the speed in those modes to accelerate the climb or, or decelerate the climb. Uh, next mode I'm gonna look at is vertical speed. This is one of the most basic modes we have. In vertical speed, I'm forcing the airplane to fly in exact vertical speed. So just like the others, I put it towards me to force it and I set whatever vertical speed I want. So let's set 2,000 feet per minute. There it is. And you get speed, vertical speed 2,000. So the engines will now adjust for the speed that we've got in the window, which is still that managed mode, that 250 knots. And the vertical speed of 2,000 feet per minute becomes the target for the airplane. You can see it displayed up here. And it's also shown here, VS plus 2,000, uh, which if I showed you properly on the window, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we are climbing at 2,000 feet per minute now, and I can adjust this accordingly 
put in a thousand week minute if we want as we get closer to our level off and then we're going to outstar now if i was to override an outstar mode i.e put in a higher level it will jump into vertical speed because this is a basic mode and you can see the flashing box it's reverting to this basic mode we do use vertical speed it's particularly useful in the sense when you want to adjust the uh, final part of an arrival to make sure you continue a continuous descent nice and efficient uh, but anyway there we go so uh, vertical speed a thousand and the airplane will climb at a thousand feet per minute a final thing we can do is press this heading fpa i can swap it over and the airplane will now go into uh, flight path angle and here it's flying an angle so plus 1.8 now in the Airbus you'd never really use this in the climb but if I want to make it climb at a 4 degree angle I can put in 4 degrees and it will now climb at 4 or it will certainly do its best to I think it should manage quite easily actually but you can see the thrust coming on um, yeah we don't climb in flight path angle because there's no real need to we don't usually climb in vertical speed either the reason is if I was to command a really high vertical speed let's say 6,000 feet per minute uh, the airplane can run out of energy because the engines can't deliver that so it'd be prioritizing the vertical speed and then eventually it will struggle to now the Airbus has protections, but that's certainly what it would do. So let's level off then at uh, 190, up into thrust climb, open climb, and take a look at the lateral modes. Now for lateral modes, by which I mean the way we turn, uh, we have the airplane in nav mode. So you can see the heading is blanked out as it is up here on our FCU in the sim. Um, and what it's doing is it's flying in nav mode. The airplane is now choosing where it goes based on what we entered into the computer earlier we can override that with the heading bug now the heading bug is missing in the airbus unlike the boeing it doesn't show all the time so we don't have to update it we just leave it alone if i suddenly want the airplane to fly in heading mode i can simply pull the heading bug or heading knob here and it will then go into heading mode here on the pfd and you'll see the heading bug appear and that is now what the airplane will fly as i now turn the airplane left and right it will as you can see with the flight directors it will turn accordingly to, to fly that heading if I want to go back into nav mode, you guessed it, just push it in and the airplane goes back into nav. You can do what's called pre-select a heading and I can turn the heading bug to a different heading. So if I just turn it, it wakes up and you go 040, but it won't fly that heading. Well, let's make it more extreme, so just to prove my point, I put the heading 020. It won't fly heading 020 because it's I've not selected it. I'm still in nav mode, as you can see. And on the real aircraft, eventually this heading window would close again. It will go back to dashes. This only lasts a little while. So let's see if it does it. Um, but yeah. By the way, when you push it back into nav mode, you do need to be on an intercept heading or close to your original green line. Otherwise, it won't find it and it will complain at you and you'll have to make a direct to something like that. There we go, leveling off at 250. So that is the typical uh, lateral modes. Um, let's see if that window will close. I'm curious now. We can, of course, also run directs. So if you were on a heading, let's say uh, we were off our track. There you go, it's closed now. Before I didn't touch it there, it just closed on its own because it does after time. Um, so yeah, no heading bug shown anymore. Let's say we're on another heading though. Let's say a traffic control puts us on heading 110, which would be disappointing on this route, but there we go. Heading 110. And everything I've talked about here, I'm gonna compare to the um, to the Boeing uh, in the it, when we get into it so this is just a, a refresher for those of you I know lots of people who watch this channel are very used to the Airbus but I thought it'd be good to just talk through it just to remind you because we'll talk directly about these same these exact same sequence of events but in the Boeing so let's say we're on a heading and then air traffic control sends us to uh, waypoint Logan over here this is very different as well to the Boeing all I need to do is press the direct page down here in the McDo and then select Logan, it goes to the top. I see the line here, the amber line. That's what it thinks it wants to do. And I simply, you can see, watch the heading windows open. Not sure why it's gone to 035. That's a bug I must have created. <laughs> uh, but I can put direct in there and it closes again and you get nav. And now the airplane turns and flies towards the Logan waypoint. So all I had to do, even though I was on heading mode, I just had to enter it in here and press go. I'll press insert and then it just flies that again very different to the uh, Boeing finally the descent modes in the Airbus work the same way as the uh, climb modes so we have looked at uh, normal climb and open climb and in descent it's exactly the same if I wind in a lower flight level let's say 190 and push it in it will arm descent mode now it has a constraint because it thinks we have to be 250 at Logan 
um, so it's not going to do it yet but it would otherwise go into DES and fly the managed profile in the Boeing that would be called VNAV we'll see that in a moment so what am I going to do well I pull it and it goes thrust idle and open descent and now it begins its descent down towards Logan that'll be at idle thrust because I'm effectively commanding the quickest descent uh, via the thrust and the wind speed window closed so I can pull the speed window and then increase it if I want the airplane to go down a bit quicker so now as I wind up the speed the airplane increases its descent rate uh, down to flight level 190 likewise I can bring it back and the airplane will raise the nose all while staying at idle thrust because we are in open descent so it's thrust idle open descent and it will now reduce the speed as it slows down again once again of course we can fly in FPA or virtual speed and I can control these by putting them towards me very much like we saw earlier so let's have a look at how this would work in the Boeing and why it's different so here we are of course in the lovely Boeing 787 Dreamliner this is the Dash 9 variant and we're going to take a look at how the autopilot is different in its own way so let me just bring up the uh, lights a bit to make it easy to see so you can see here that instead of a nice simple <laughs> mini FCU like this we have a full-size Boeing mode control panel MCP there are more buttons on this there's no way around it so let's look at how these modes differ well you can see here in the speed section instead of just having a speed control and a window we actually have the speed window we have the speed control but then this although it can be pushed in uh, next to it we have lateral modes vertical modes two vertical modes here we have an auto thrust mode and then a climb continuous mode which we won't look at today we've then got the auto throttle arm switch over here um, which of course in the Airbus is down in the middle here so yeah slight, slightly different formatting but a lot of similar functionality which is going to be the, the case for a lot of this really in the middle we have the heading which is again just to the right on the Airbus FCU heading as well and this is more straightforward except we have this little cell button on the, uh, the Boeing cell here whereas in the Airbus we don't have that we push and pull so pressing cell is the same as pulling on the Airbus to, to select your heading hold is a mode we don't have on the Airbus it's a reversion mode on the Airbus so that it, the airplane would just go into the, the current heading if something has happened um, but that would inevitably have brought up the heading bug in the Boeing you can press heading hold to ignore the bug and just fly the current heading again let's look at that in flight vertical speed window over here slight variation they are actually swapped over compared to the Airbus which I find interesting because the rest are in the same order it goes speed uh, lateral modes altitude but then Airbus put the vertical speed on the right of that uh, vertical sp speed is here on the 78 uh, with the vertical speed button so it's two controls you select it here and then you adjust it here um, simple on the Airbus you just have one control you can select and then pull uh, to make it happen and then you have your altitude window over here with the auto and the thousand feet increment which is similar in functionality to the Airbus's 100 and 1000 feet increments <laughs> again we'll look at that in flight so I'm just going to arm LNAV and VNAV uh, on the window and you can see here this is a custom 787 config profile I'm using for the FCU and you're going to see that you can actually use the FCU to fly the 787 uh, and using this custom config through Moby flight so the first thing you'll notice is when I put LNAV in the little dot appeared remember that dot is used by the Airbus to show that the airplane has control and it would normally dash out this window but in here the window is going to stay open on the heading the heading bug does not disappear on the Boeing but what you can do is by having a little dot see that the lateral nav is armed so uh, that's why we've got this L nav here now I can select heading cell by pulling in the same way in the aerial aircraft you would push the little button here and I can push it in to uh, put it into um, L nav so I push in the control L nav button arms up here and we get L nav on here so in many ways it's the same functionality uh, as you have on the Airbus it's just you even control it in the same way it just is represented in a different way on, on the Boeing mode control panel um, again easier to see in flight now we're in heading cell I'm going to turn the flight razor off and on to get us back into toga toga and then I'm going to push that in and it will arm LNAV there we go let's get the airplane in the air and then we can talk about this uh, and compare it to how we flew the Airbus a minute ago there's 80 knots hold so now we can control the thrust levers manually if we want to 
But we don't. We leave them at their take of thrust setting. And rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Okay, so we're climbing away now. The gear is up. Moving towards the flight directors. Let's engage the autopilot. I can simply push AP1. You'll see that it actually engages both here because in the 787 you don't choose an autopilot. You just press the autopilot button and the airplane chooses an autopilot and engages it. So we get autopilot mode here and you can see it down here on the PFD autopilot. So that's why both autopilot buttons are lit up on our FCU. Now as we get above the five, we'll bring the flaps to one. And we're actually gonna leave them at one because we have the same restrictions. 220 knots, 5,000 feet. Our clean speed, even at these lightweight for the 78, is actually a bit faster. So level off at 5,000 again because we're in VNAV speed. So the airplane will obey that 5,000 constraint. I can actually display it. If I press menu, data, you'll see the 5,000 in there. So we'll see that in just a moment. Even if I put 6,000 in the window, which I can do through the FCU, if I set it to thousands, 6,000 in the window, a speed VNAV path because it's saying it's following the path mode which it knows means we need to level off at 5000 because that's the VNAV path. So this is the same as managed climb. I can override it though remember. Now in the Boeing to override an altitude constraint such as the one we have here uh, where we have a constraint at 5000 feet let's say I want to climb to 6000 now if I put it in the window the airplane won't just go there um, and of course make sure you're in VNAV um, so it's in VNAV out so now it's accelerating to 250 knots so we can bring in the flaps because we passed that speed restriction but it won't climb to 6 we need to do what's called out intervening now to make it carry on with the climb because now it's going into VNAV out it won't just carry on um, and that's true even if it makes it to the next this next waypoint it should want to climb up to 6 but it won't do it we're going to have to tell it so I'll just demonstrate that by letting it get there. So you can see now the next waypoint is about to change to KKS 6000 but the airplane just sits where it is. So we have to do what's called out intervention. Now with this profile on the Mini FCU you press this metric out button to do that. So you press that and it goes thrust ref VNAV speed. What you're doing, we're pressing the metric out button here but up on the FC, uh, MCP we're actually clicking in this button. It's this. You click that in like that. And that puts it back into its sort of VNAV path mode, which you can see there, speed VNAV path, and it will level off at 6,000 feet. Again, it won't climb up higher because it's got a 6,000 feet restriction coming up, but let's say we can put the cruise altitude in. So I'll set this to 1,000, set it to 22, which is our planned cruising level. And you see the airplane does absolutely nothing. So again, I'm going to press speed intervention, and it goes thrust ref, VNAV speed. So this is something I mentioned in my climb tutorial on the 787 and if it does this speed in a path it's happy at 6000 it's because you've only cleared out one restriction so now it has the Bogner restriction you can see this on the legs page the magenta is the current restriction being applied so I'll press my intervention again and now we've cleared through to the Bogner so it's done it again back to 6000 so press it again and finally it can go up to 22 so what you have to do is to clear through these restrictions is keep pressing intervention to get the airplane to go into that climb mode um, to get past it. So if it doesn't go to the level you've set, press intervention, which in this profile for the FCU is the metric out button, which is a quite a clever little way to get around it, I think. But of course, the real airplane, you'd actually push in to do that. You would just push in to um, get the airplane into intervention. You push in on the altitude knob. But what pushing in does on this airplane is it engages the VNAV mode. So you can see there, the alternative is flitch speed. So if you pull, you'll get thrust ref, flitch speed. Flitch speed is where the airplane tries to get to the next cruising or the next altitude in the window within two minutes. Let me just get the airplane to level off. Let's stop at 100 speed and out, see if it can do that. <laughs> now flight level change is, and I talked about this in my climb video, is uh, a mode that will get you there within two minutes. So if you want to climb, let's say 10,000 feet, let's say we want to go to flight level 200, well, it can't get there in two minutes. So all it's going to do is go to the uh, highest thrust setting it can and then climb at that speed. So if I pull that, 
it's effectively like pressing flitch flight level change and we get thrust ref flitch speed it goes to the climb thrust setting and now it's climbing at flitch speed so this is the equivalent of open climb as we saw in the airbus and likewise i can adjust the speed window just like open climb in the airbus as i wind it up the nose lowers as i wind it back the nose raises we're controlling the climb using the speed hence flitch speed uh, and the thrust is just going to sit at climb thrust so if i want to get rid of this window because you can see here we're just controlling it like we would in open climb and open descent but if I put the airplane back into VNAV speed, it closes for me. And you can see here the window closes. Likewise, we can put it again. And we can, sorry, we push it in and that will then speed into VN and then I can adjust. So here we're in VNAV speed, but I can still adjust that climb speed, which is slightly different to uh, um, the way the Airbus does it sometimes, although sometimes it, it does it the same way. So you can see that ultimately we are using uh, our FCU in a very similar way to control what is I think a more complex layout of the MCP but ultimately we're getting the same functions. We have the option to let the airplane decide everything which is here in VNAV. I can give the speed to the airplane, there you go, I push it in, the speed window closes so that's, that speed is now controlled by the airplane. It's in VNAV and LNAV so it's following its lateral path and it's following the vertical profile it had in its head. So let's put in the 22,000 feet. There we go. And it will climb up to that and that's that. We then have the option to override any of these things by uh, either going into flight level change, uh, pulling this or pushing the speed window to open it, so there, push it in and intervene, which is true on the real Boeing, you push in this button, so manually you do it here, push it in. You can't pull, there's no pulling on the Boeing, it's push. So you push it in to open it, oh, there you go, and you push it in to close it. Um, it's the same same action, but there you go. You don't give it back to the airplane. You're always just pushing to, to, to open that. We call it opening the window, opening the speed window by pushing in. And now I can climb a bit faster by winding the speed back. And then I can push it in again to give it back to the airplane. There you go. Now, we're in LNAV, and you can see that shown on here by this little dot. And remember, this is just a Moby flight profile. You could customize this uh, accordingly to how you'd like it to be. Um, so if I wind this round... Uh, and wind up the scale a bit you'll see that we can um, oh let's go to standard as well of course very interesting standard there we go um, now uh, lateral modes what do we do with those well the heading bug we have to constantly update on the Boeing it doesn't sit where, where it should um, we have to constantly do that now one advantage of that is I can have the heading bug set where I want it let's say we're expecting to need to come left because of weather let's say there's a thunderstorm up ahead so I'd leave the heading bug off to the side and then we can we're waiting for air traffic to get a word in and I can update it and just get a judgment of where our path or where our heading at least is going to go uh, and then when I want to go to that heading I just pull and it goes into heading cell and all you would do up here is push this little cell button that is the same as on the Airbus as pulling the heading bug so you press cell and it will fly in heading cell mode to that heading bug and now just like when we're in heading mode in the Airbus it will follow this heading bug around so I can move it right and the airplane tries to turn right to meet it I can move it left and it turns left to meet it 050 there we go just like the Airbus, if I want to go back into LNAV, if you push it in, it will put it into LNAV on here. But in the real aircraft, you can't push in the heading bug, so you have to push this LNAV button. So you'll see that all of these buttons basically just replace the, the um, pushing function or the pulling function of the, the knobs on the Airbus. And that's basically all they're there for. Now again, just like the Airbus, this only works if you're close enough to the lateral profile or you're on an intercept heading. You can't just push it when you're miles away. There is one other mode which we have, which is heading hold mode. If you push hold on the Boeing, it will just fly the current heading. And you can see there, my heading bug was off to the left. I pushed heading hold and the airplane just flies along in whatever it was doing, heading hold. And now if I move the heading bug, nothing changes. It's just going to ignore it because it's in hold. It's holding the heading, which does make sense, really. And a feature we don't really have on the Airbus. I can just now push that in to get LNAV or I can pull it to get heading cell and the airplane will fly over to that heading bug. So that can be quite handy. So I'll put it back into LNF for now. There we go. Um, other vertical modes, if we were to climb up to 250, of course, there is vertical speed over here. If I pull that, the airplane goes into VS. You can see it's at zero. And then I just set whichever vertical speed I fancy. And you'll see it up here on the uh, MCP, 2,000 feet per minute, and the airplane will climb. Now, the difference between Airbus and Boeing uh, is that the vertical speed is not shown in the flight mode enunciators up here. These are very important. They tell us what the airplane's actually doing or the automatics are doing anyway, the, um, the airplane automatic systems. 
It doesn't tell me it's doing 2,000 feet per minute. I can see it here, which is fine at 2,000, but if you're doing lower numbers, is that 1,000, 1,100, is that 600, 800? It can be a little bit hard to tell, so you do end up having to look up here at the VS window. But luckily with the Mini FCU, you can see it right here. It does show on this window, and you can adjust accordingly. Just like the Airbus as well, you can go into FPA mode and get it to fly an angle. And this is true on the Boeing. Flight path angle as a mode. Again, you can't actually see really what it's commanding. Even worse in flight path angle, you get those little eyebrows here. When you're in hold mode in the Boeing, or out hold mode like this, it will give you this white light on the hold button here. Just a, a weird quirk of the system, but you can actually see it here out. So we're at 210. Now, Let's do a direct. So if we were in heading cell, let me bring the heading bug. Let's say we were put on the heading from air traffic control over on 080. I pull that and we're in heading cell and the airplane turns right. We can now see that the airplane is turning. And then let's say we want to go direct to Logan. Air traffic control clears us to Logan. Well, again, if you follow my climb tutorial, uh, you'll see that it's quite simple. We just move Logan to the top of the legs page, the top left of page one of the legs page, the purple box. And I put it in there. It draws a line just like the Airbus and there's Logan. So I'm going to execute that and there it is, all calculated. But this is crucial and easy to forget. Ask me how I know. The airplane won't turn. You just carry on flying on whatever mode it was in, heading cell. It doesn't treat that as a command to then fly there. You've just re-coordinated the, the legs page. Doesn't care. It won't go there. You need to then engage LNAV, which would mean clicking up here, or of course with our mini FCU, we're going to push in the heading bug and then that gives us LNAV mode. So effectively we are flying this like an airbus through this box but i don't think that's a bad thing frankly you can see my cat's been in here <laughs> uh, and there we go we're now turning towards logan some other little quirks of the boeing is that we can change the bank angle it's in auto mode at the moment so the airplane according to your speed and altitude adjusts the bank angle you can see here we're doing about 20 degrees i can actually force it to do more by winding it all the way around let me bring the heading bug around just to keep it turning so we'll just come left on a big heading change. You can see there, I forced it up to 30 degrees, so now it's doing 30 degrees of bank. And likewise, I can bring it all the way down to 10 degrees of bank. And it will do 10. I think on older Boeings, this was used uh, accordingly. At certain altitude, you would swap it over. All we do on the 7-8 is obviously leave it in auto, as we love. Um, that the airplane decide. It does a good job. At high altitude, the 787 banks more than any airplane I've flown. Uh, partly because it's so fast uh, that it needs to get a fairly sharp turn on. But also, it's got a very big wing. The uh, the wing profile on the 78, it's just a beautiful wing. It gives us loads of margin. So we're not actually as close to the stall or the overspeed as you would be on a lot of aircraft at cruising altitude. So the 787 is um, well suited to, to turning at quite sharp, uh, relatively sharp angles. They're not actually sharp, but just comparatively compared to other aircraft I've flown at altitude, including the Airbus. It banks more certainly than that. And there we go. In the descent in the uh, 787, so let's, let me see if I can, is it going to do that if I put it back into LNAV? No, we're already, so you can see we're 1.4 miles left of center line and I've engaged LNAV. It won't do it now. We're just heading off the track. So I need to actually turn it around onto an intercept and then it will re-engage. And Logan is the waypoint in front of us. So that's good. Uh, the descent, like the Airbus, is just the same in reverse. Uh, the only difference being that on the Boeing, we can descend in VNAV. Um, so if I put it, let's put it up to the cruise altitude of 220. And we'll do it in flitch. So I'm going to pull that. So there we go. Thrust flitch speed up to 220. Which was our cruising altitude. It was planning to be 250 at Logan actually. So let's put 250 in. Thrust flitch speed. Um, the only difference with the Boeing is that in the descent, it will allow us to stay in VNAB even when we're in heading mode. On the Airbus, once you come off that lateral path, it will drop out. You need to be in open descent or vertical speed or flight path angle. But in the Boeing, we can actually keep it in VNAV. It doesn't always work that well because, of course, as soon as you're off the lateral profile, the calculations aren't always that correct. <laughs> so it's only valid for short periods, really. Um, but it is still an option that we don't have on the Airbus. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been interesting for you. A look there at the differences between flying the uh, Boeing autopilot control system and the Airbus FCU. So the mode control panel versus the FCU. 
two things that I've used uh, in real life extensively now, um, although certainly less time in the Boeing one, uh, and something that I think is quite interesting to see the difference. Ultimately, you're getting the same result, but there are just differences in the way we do it, and there'll be preferences amongst you, uh, as well as there are amongst pilots on how they do it. Personally, which do I prefer? Well, that's really tricky for me to say. I've spent a lot of time on the Airbus one, so I am naturally more used to it. I think as I grow uh, with the Boeing one, I'll start to enjoy some of the uh, the interventions that we can have on that, such as the fact that I can move the thrust levers uh, if I need to in certain modes, things like that. That's all. We'll talk about this more in future videos. Do please subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials and in-depth videos on the Boeing 787, as well as live streams. Please do keep safe and well. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Finally, please don't forget if you'd like to purchase a mini FCU, the current pre-order is open and you can follow the link in the description to get 10% off using uh, my special link from, uh, from Mini Cockpit. So thank you so much uh, to them for sponsoring this video.